Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, this is the SmartNet Summer Update and talking about the GNSS launch uh, for SmartNet uh, here in North America. We've got quite a bit to cover today. Uh, here's our agenda uh, by the numbers. Uh, talk about the store launch, uh, network RTK updates, what this means in general about network RTK uh, and using it with GNSS. Uh, the GNSS correction launch itself, uh, what it's going to take to get uh, those uh, GNSS correction services by moving over to an MSM message and what that looks like for you guys out in the field. And of course, the support resources and then uh, what's coming next uh, with SmartNet. As always, at any time, if you have a question, uh, please top at the box. Uh, we've got folks here to answer it uh, and we'll either answer them as we go uh, or uh, we'll answer them uh, at the uh, end of the session or as uh, becomes pertinent uh, with the slides that are available to us. So first, uh, we have a quick update. The numbers are always uh, growing and getting bigger, uh, but since the last time we probably presented to you guys, uh, it's been a pretty big, a pretty big sea change. Uh, we've had just over 600 stations about two years ago, and now we're approaching, uh, or just over 1,300 stations currently in SmartNet. Uh, this means we have almost 1 billion acres under coverage, and that's uh, not a mistype. That is really what we have. Uh, this means we have service uh, in 42 states uh, with SmartNet. Eight Canadian provinces are now serviced by SmartNet. Uh, and this gives us, gives us coverage uh, with 459 of the top 500 uh, metropolitan statistical areas. Uh, in the U.S., uh, this means we cover about 230 million people. Uh, and in Canada, uh, this means we cover about 27 million folks. We've come a long way uh, in the past few years, uh, but over the past two years especially, uh, you can see a dramatic difference. Uh, so in June 2015, uh, this is what our footprint looked like. Uh, and uh, today, uh, this is what our footprint looked like. Uh, so you can see a, a slight change uh, where we went uh, from just over um, uh, right at 600 stations uh, to right at 1,300. Uh, so we've had some uh, pretty rapid growth uh, here in the past two years, uh, and we're really excited uh, to make that available for you guys uh, out in the field. Uh, another big development uh, in the past uh, uh, few months uh, has been the launch of our online store. Uh, this is something we've been talking about for a while, uh, but get all the moving pieces and parts uh, in place to get it uh, get it off the ground has been a uh, has been a big uh, has been a big push. Uh, this will allow customers uh, a lot of different uh, abilities. Um, uh, online product selector. Uh, so if you're a new subscriber uh, or if you're adding a license, uh, we walk you through the process a little bit. Uh, credit card processing, so you can place uh, order uh, directly on the portal uh, on the store uh, and get that um, uh, taken care of uh, right then. And we have both a, a prepaid or monthly term uh, available. <clears throat> uh, prepaid means you pay up front. Uh, monthly means uh, that you pay on a month-by-month -month basis for that annual license or three-month, six-month license, whatever you've signed up for. Uh, it's instant access, uh, so if you're adding a license, uh, you'll have instant, instant access to that license that very moment once you accept the terms and conditions that credit card's charged. Uh, you get your username and password, so there's no more waiting. Uh, same thing for the renewals. Uh, renewals are instantly uh, renewed and extended, uh, so you don't have to wait around and wait for any kind of confirmation a day later. Uh, and also a big change uh, with the store and the launch of the store uh, is Smart Connect is now included uh, with every uh, SmartNet license. Uh, currently, that applies to only new licenses. Um, <clears throat> uh, we want to walk before we run. Uh, so these new licenses will get a Smart Connect card. Uh, and then early in Q4 2017, uh, renewals uh, will also uh, have Smart Connect included. Uh, Smart Connect is our data uh, package, uh, so that means you don't have to worry about data services anymore. Uh, we do have a large logistics effort uh, in play to, uh, to get SIM cards uh, out to all of our customers uh, prior to um, you know, prior to uh, the uh, you know, the launch of that, going with new uh, with renewals. So that's the big updates: 1,300 stations, um, uh, the uh, the 1 billion acres of coverage, uh, and the store launching as it relates for the commercial side of the service. Uh, from a network side of the service, we've got a lot of great um, information to come out today. Uh, I do have a question that came up: Will the presentation be made available for download after the webinar? Uh, it's not available for download, uh, but it will. Uh, the video is being recorded, uh, so you will be able to watch it online if you have. Uh, um, 
uh, if you need to, to, to tackle it. <clears throat> uh, so with new developments uh, for Network RTK. So for many, many moons now, uh, we have talked about future satellite signals. What's coming? L5, Galileo, Beidou, uh, all these future signals, uh, what's coming in the future? Well, future satellite signals uh, are no longer in the future. They are here uh, today. Uh, so GPS L5, um, uh, 12 satellites uh, are in current constellation. Uh, Galileo, 18 satellites uh, are in the current constellation uh, with two additional satellites that are under commissioning uh, and four scheduled for launch uh, later this year. Um, with Beidou, uh, we also have some that are visible in the current constellation, one or two, uh, depending on where you're at, you're at in the U.S., uh, with projected global coverage uh, in 2020. Uh, this means there's a lot, of, a lot of new birds in the sky uh, and some new frequencies uh, that we can use um, uh, with, uh, with GPS. So when we start talking about data and signal processing expectations, what does more satellites mean? Uh, it means more redundancy, uh, better geometry, uh, better uh, ability to, to detect errors. Uh, so better geometry basically means strength of figures. Uh, we have satellites spread across the sky more, uh, so we can get a better, uh, better geometry for our solution on the ground. Uh, this means we can track uh, right now, uh, in some instances, greater than 25 simultaneous satellites. Uh, some of these being triple frequency satellites. So this is a this is a huge boon. Uh, better signals. Uh, so uh, L5 is a better signal. Um, uh, Altbach and and, and some of the uh, frequencies in, in Galileo are also better signals. Uh, so this allows uh, improved core, uh, code correlation, uh, lower noise, uh, reduce multipath, uh, improve tracking in difficult environments. Um, a triple frequency uh, means you have different uh, uh, ion geo-free uh, linear combinations, can skating ambiguity resolution. Uh, what that means in layman's terms is now I can look at L1, L2 and do a solution. I can look at L1 and L5 to do a solution. I can look at L2 and L5 to do a solution. So I've got a lot of redundancy in the solution itself or in the, uh, in the signal structure itself. Um, faster and more reliable ambiguity resolution because I can do uh, this checking in between the different frequencies uh, and have also the ability to measure uh, phase multipath uh, and also uh, have a better uh, way to model high order uh, ionospheric effects. Uh, so all these things play a part in the modernization, um, <clears throat> the modernization uh, of, uh, of GNSS. So all these are really important. Uh, but what it shakes down to uh, is, is how do we use it? Uh, well, one question we have been asked in the past is, can we use these interchangeably? Uh, can we use one from here and two from there and three from here? Um, they're not quite interchangeable, uh, trying to mix the different constellations. Uh, so there are some minimums that you have to prescribe to uh, to be able to use this. Uh, so uh, can you use satellites uh, equally in any combination? Uh, currently, no, because uh, you have uh, clock and time reference issues, and since GPS is all based on time, uh, we have to be able to correlate that time and collaborate that time um, uh, together. Uh, so, for example, to fix ambiguities, uh, you do need a minimum uh, of uh, four satellites uh, or greater than four satellites needed uh, for one uh, from one GNSS provider uh, plus one more from that same provider. Uh, so uh, just think of it this way. Uh, to get a solution, you need you know, five GPS satellites um, uh, or uh, you need four GPS satellites plus two GLONASS plus one Beidou, something like that. You kind of got it, um, uh, you got to kind of get it mixed uh, a little bit. Uh, with as many satellites that are up right now, um, you know, the minimum is not uh, really a, a, an issue unless you get into a really tight uh, environment. And then this kind of comes into play. And we'll show you some slides uh, in just a second what that looks like. A uh, question came up. I don't see coverage in Pittsburgh. We're using SmartNet with a Leica Xeno 20 in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, you're using a DGNSS solution. Uh, the solutions that I showed on the map earlier uh, were really for RTK centimeter level uh, solutions. Uh, so the DGPS footprint would be much, much bigger. Uh, you have 200 kilometer uh, spacing, or excuse me, 200 kilometer buffers um, around uh, around the stations. So you'd still be able to get you know, decimeter level accuracies uh, in areas outside of our current footprint. Um, but what does all this really mean uh, to you guys out in the field? Uh, quite simply, uh, more satellites. Uh, so you'll have better availability in canopy or canyon environments. Uh, so uh, a canyon environment uh, would be in a, in a city center uh, where you have very small uh, urban canyons that, you're, uh, that you can see the sky through. Um, it won't necessarily offer higher accuracy. 
Uh, you know, the, the biggest constraint on improving accuracy in GPS uh, it really comes in the vertical component. Uh, and since we have a big chunk of Earth under us and we can't see uh, the satellites uh, under us because of the big chunk of Earth, since radio waves don't propagate through, uh, uh, through solid ground so well, um, that uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't work so well to try to improve the overall accuracies. Uh, but more satellites does mean uh, an improved reliability uh, in the solution. Uh, this means that when you do see a 3D quality uh, on your screen, a, uh, HRMS or VMS value on your screen, uh, you can have a better trust in that uh, if your rover has been optimized uh, for using uh, all of these additional satellites. Uh, with a third frequency, uh, GPS L5, for example, uh, you have improved ionospheric error modeling. Uh, this allows us to do some things on the network side. This is particularly germane uh, when you start talking about moving into uh, Solar Max. Uh, right now, uh, Solar Max is not so max. Uh, we're, we're really headed down in the bottom of the trough uh, with uh, the lowest uh, solar cycle activity in the last hundred years. Uh, so that's a that's a, a really great thing uh, for GNSS positioning. But as we approach, as we turn from the trough up towards the peak, uh, get through the valley, um, you know, L5 will allow a lot of ability on the network side as well as the rover side uh, to better optimize and model uh, ionospheric activity and, and the error associated with it. Um, it also does increase the possibility for longer RTK baselines, uh, so you could stretch that baseline out further uh, than you can right now. Uh, typically, we talk about uh, you know 50 kilometers, 30 miles being uh, something that's realistic, uh, but you might be able to stretch that baseline out without as a uh, negative effect uh, on on your accuracy uh, as you have uh, currently as you stretch that baseline uh, further out in areas of no network coverage or sparse uh, network coverage. Uh, so this is an example uh, picture of uh, a receiver uh, set up in uh, a, a really difficult environment, to say the least. Uh, so this test was done in a canyon environment. Uh, left you to the left here, you can see a, a six-story building. Uh, to the right, uh, you can see a one-story building. Uh, and so this receiver was able to fix uh, with four GPS two GLONASS and four Galileo. Uh, this was test was done in Europe. Uh, so you can see uh, one GPS, uh, the four uh, for one GNSS constellation, uh, and then four from another were able to give a fixed ambiguity solution uh, without uh, having to have five GPS and two GLONASS or something like that. So that's pretty impressive. Um, so yesterday, um, on actually on Sunday night, we did a large software upgrade uh, and launched uh, the GNSS corrections for a lot of areas that we'll talk about a little bit uh, later uh, yesterday morning, uh, and we asked one of our Intrepid dealers uh, to go out and, and do some testing for us uh, to see what they could do with it. Um, you might have seen a tweet earlier today. Um, you know, we turn something on and they go play in the trees. Uh, so this is a canopy environment, uh, so you can see uh, the tree uh, that's directly above uh, the receiver uh, and a one-story building uh, there in the background. Um, uh, the receiver uh, was uh, actually um, uh, tracking 23 satellites uh, and was able to get a fixed solution uh, with 10 GPS, 8 GLONASS, 5 Galileo, and 2 Beidou. Uh, so uh, a pretty impressive shot, uh, and this wasn't just one shot. Uh, it was multiple shots during the day uh, to make sure that the shot he got uh, was accurate. Does the minimum four SVs have to be GPS? Uh, technically, that really depends on your rover. Uh, on the network side, we do require GPS uh, to, uh, to do what we do on the processing algorithm side. Uh, but from a rover perspective, it really depends. Uh, a Leica rover, for example, does have the ability uh, to um, uh, fix ambiguities uh, as long as you have four minimum uh, with any constellation. Uh, but uh, I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find a chance where you don't have four GPS um, uh, satellites available and four Galileo, for example. So uh, technically speaking, no, uh, but it really does depend on the rover and the rover algorithm, rover algorithm used to do RTK fixing. Um, so that's more of a rover side question. So um, that's a quick brief. A uh, lot of new satellites up, a lot of new frequencies available, a lot more coming, uh, and what it means on the rover side. Uh, but to be able to use it on the rover side, there's the other part of the equation, uh, which is the network. So when we talk about uh, real-time networks, uh, we really talk about 
five main components uh, of real-time networks. Uh, first being uh, the GNSS reference station infrastructure. Uh, that, of course, is, is, is ultra important. Uh, the IT infrastructure, uh, the correction service itself, so this could be the software and service platform, uh, online tools and resources, and then, of course, the support and development teams on the back end. Um, to be able to offer a GNSS correction, the infrastructure, the GNSS infrastructure, so the receivers out in the field, uh, the IT infrastructure, uh, the service and software platforms uh, must all be capable uh, to uh, uh, of a GNSS solution to provide a GNSS network correction. And not one piece uh, can be left out. Uh, and so it's really critical uh, to understand um, you know, what, uh, what that looks like. So from an infrastructure side, for, so from a field perspective, what's in the field right now as far as the 1,300 stations in, in SmartNet? 99.99% uh, of SmartNet is GPS and GLONASS capable. Uh, there's a couple of stray, uh, uh, stray uh, units and uh, the outer reaches of SmartNet uh, that are just uh, that are that are just GPS. Um, uh, at one point, we'll get around to updating those uh, those couple, uh, but we made a pretty big dent um, uh, when we updated about 10 stations uh, earlier this year. 70% uh, of SmartNet is GNSS capable, uh, meaning it's capable of tracking uh, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and Beidou. Um, and uh, we're 100% GNSS capable uh, in these markets. So California, Connecticut, Dakota, Delaware, Georgia, Iowa, Kansas, Maryland will be done uh, sometime in July. Uh, Louisiana, Metro Boston, Metro Denver, uh, Minnesota, Missouri, New Hampshire, New Jersey, uh, again, will be done uh, when crews get back out into the market uh, in July. Uh, North Carolina, Oregon, DEI, Rhode Island, Texas, Virginia will be uh, in, eight, in July as well, uh, Washington and Wisconsin. Uh, so uh, a lot of different areas. Uh, we now cover 100% GNSS. And of course, as always, uh, we are committed uh, to getting to full GNSS capabilities in all of our coverage areas um, uh, at, uh, uh, you know, at, the, as soon as, at the earliest possible date. Uh, when will GNSS be available in Northern California? Aaron, hold on to that question and we'll see in just a second. Um, on top of the GNS infrastructure, uh, you also have to have the IT infrastructure um, and the software uh, service platform. Uh, moving to full GNSS capabilities means more processing power. Pretty simple. More satellites means more processing power. Uh, more memory because of that. More bandwidth. You have you know, 30 to 40 percent more uh, data uh, coming in from, uh, from the infrastructure. Uh, so you have more bandwidth taken up. Uh, and then more storage because you're storing more data uh, from the receivers in the field. Uh, you really have to harden and optimize your entire IT stack to prepare for this. Uh, to give you an idea, we just doubled our CPU capacity um, and almost doubled our uh, RAM capacity. Um, uh, you know, to, to handle uh, these upgrades uh, that have been going on here uh, in the past several, uh, past several months to get ready for today uh, to talk to you guys. Um, so all of this has to be done in concert between the infrastructure and the IT platform. Uh, and then you have the software, the platform itself, uh, which we upgraded um, on, uh, on Sunday night. Uh, so currently, uh, this is uh, the coverage that I showed uh, just a little while ago. Uh, if we now take our red and we turn it gray magically, uh, this is our GPS and GLONASS coverage uh, that we can offer today. And this is our GNSS coverage uh, as it stands uh, with GNSS capable receivers. Uh, so we do have some additional work uh, that we need to do. Uh, to, uh, to, to finish this out. Uh, so we're not launching full GNSS all in these red areas just today. We're going to talk about that in just a second um, uh, because we have codes and firmware and some other things that it's a little longer lead time to get all that done uh, as well as uh, to make sure that we have everything in place before we turn on uh, a 30 to 40 percent greater load um, uh, just right out of the box um, uh, and not detrimentally affect uh, the user base as a whole. Uh, so uh, Aaron and Robert, uh, your questions about Metro Denver, uh, I hope you can see right here. Uh, this is what we consider Metro Denver uh, that does get it done in Pueblo. We do some outlying uh, stations uh, east and west of Pueblo that, uh, uh, that aren't GNSS capable receivers right now. Uh, and then, of course, as you get uh, past, uh, say, Wellington uh, up to the north into Wyoming, uh, that area is not GNSS capable at this time, uh, GG only. Um, 
Question is, uh, is Cape Cod in the mix for Massachusetts coverage? Uh, not at this time. This is the current uh, footprint, uh, probably for the rest of the year, of GNSS uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the New England market uh, as it stands right now. But we are now fully GG in the, uh, we are fully GPS and GLONASS capable uh, in the Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, uh, uh, markets that we haven't been in the past. So we've made a sizable investment uh, since taking over the MTS network uh, to uh, to get it up to uh, full GG uh, as well as full infrastructure uh, great equipment. Uh, so I think you can see that as you uh, uh, as you start using the network up there, you should see pretty uh, pretty great performance. Um, so we're going to be rolling out uh, complete GNSS coverage uh, over the next two to four weeks um, you know, to make sure we balance everything right. We get the load balance and the clusters are balanced for optimization uh, because we are putting a whole new uh, set of load uh, onto the infrastructure. Uh, there's not a real good way to simulate this. Uh, with 1,300 stations, you kind of got to do it as you go. Uh, so uh, we've picked some key areas uh, to start with. Uh, so available immediately for uh, GNSS uh, is the Connecticut market, uh, the Delmarva Peninsula, so uh, Delaware and uh, the Eastern Shore of Maryland, uh, Georgia, uh, the Lower Mainland BC, uh, Metro Boston, uh, Metro Chicago, uh, Metro Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Metro Denver, Metro Houston, uh, Oregon, PEI, Rhode Island, Southern California, South Texas, the Valley in Texas, uh, Washington State, Wisconsin, uh, and West Texas. Um, so if you're not on this list, uh, David, uh, then uh, you are not under current GNSS coverage. Uh, so we will be rolling that out. Uh, you know, for, for our folks in Canada, uh, this will be a little slower roll uh, because there are a lot of receivers that are not GNSS, case, uh, GNSS capable in, um, in Canada. Uh, you will have pockets of GNSS single baseline uh, and you may have pockets of uh, GNSS coverage, and we will be posting maps uh, on the website and the portal uh, to be able to reflect where you can expect to get GNSS coverage. Um, but uh, you know, some of these are approximations um, uh, because uh, you know, if you're in a network coverage area, for example, and you have eight stations uh, that are GNSS, uh, and you have one station in the dead middle that's not, uh, you could still get GNSS coverage for most of that area. But at the moment you get uh, that one station is your master uh, and it's not fully GNSS capable, uh, you know, you'll see, uh, you know, the European, uh, the Galileo and, 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 uh, and the Compass, or uh, Chinese uh, Beidou, um, uh, you know, numbers drop on your screen. So don't be freaked out by that. Uh, if you are in an area working and you see all of a sudden Galileo and Beidou go away, that doesn't mean anything's wrong. That just means that you got connected to a station that is not GNS capable. Okay, that's all it means. There's no reason to freak out, and there's definitely no reason uh, to send in a support ticket. Uh, if you fix, you fix. It doesn't mean anything's wrong with your rover. It doesn't mean anything's in wrong with your network. Uh, it just means that you happen to be getting a correction from a station that is not GNSS capable. Uh, so in these, even in some of these areas that might be uh, you know, you know, just north of Southern California, getting into Santa Clarita or uh, Lebec or something just north of that, uh, you might get Santa Clarita, which isn't you know, GNSS, uh, and all of a sudden you go from one that is to one that isn't. It's not a big deal. Uh, we're working towards it, uh, but again, it is a process. Uh, it's a sizable investment and, and, we're, and we're, we're efforting to it. Um, question is, will RTCM3 handle the new additional data or is there a new format? Uh, we're getting to that in just a second, Hans. Always ahead of the curve. <sighs> like you read my mind. So, um, uh, network RTK types, um, uh, you know, we'll be moving to IMAX, uh, so we can, uh, uh, you know, uh, can you please, uh, currently, uh, I'll wish we'll, again, uh, we'll be posting uh, maps online to talk about GNSS uh, in, uh, in, in the areas, uh, but if you are not currently um, on this list right here, uh, you don't have GNSS connectivity for the, uh, for the immediate future, uh, or if you're not in the earlier list, again, we'll post these lists uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the support form. Uh, for you guys so you can peruse it to see where it is and we'll also be updating network coverage maps um, so uh, uh, to uh, to reflect this uh, so um, you know you can go to the coverage maps you'll be able to go to the support forums uh, and see exactly where and when things are going to be upgraded uh, you know uh, asking um, uh, you know sending support tickets in you'll be referred to those as well uh, so you know use those as tools and use those uh, as uh, as leverage uh, for uh, for what you need um, so with IMAX, 
so just so you know, um, this is a big change, a sea change for us uh, for the last uh, few years uh, since the launch uh, of SmartNet. Uh, we've really been talking about MAC, the Master Auxiliary concept. Uh, you'll notice we're not going to talk about it a great deal today uh, because the Master Auxiliary concept is not compatible uh, with GNSS corrections. Uh, this has nothing to do with SmartNet. Uh, this has nothing to do with any individual network provider. Uh, this has to do with Special Committee 104 uh, not having ratified a standard for the master auxiliary uh, uh, co uh, correction that will account for or allow for L5, Galileo, or Maydu to be used. Uh, so this will push us to be uh, using IMAX or, or, or VRS uh, as a solution. Um, you know, our preference is, of course, IMAX uh, because of its strengths uh, over VRS, uh, but it will allow for um, uh, using the RTCM 3.2 uh, multi-signal message, MSM, uh, to actually be able to do uh, a network correction uh, with the GNSS corrections involved. Uh, so an uh, a network, uh, excuse me, a SmartNet IMAX solution is individualized master auxiliary concept. So you take the strengths uh, of a MAC solution uh, and you roll it into a correction that looks more like a single baseline, uh, but it is modeled and it is affixed uh, for those network correction uh, parameters. Uh, this is individualized for each individual rover out there, uh, and it's a format that's alternative to VRS or MAC. Uh, it does support GNSS signals uh, using RTCM 3.2 MSM, uh, and SmartNet IMAX does still produce baselines from real reference stations only, uh, and it is still traceable uh, and still repeatable, uh, just like a MAC solution. It's just offloading that calculation ability uh, from the rover uh, up to the server, uh, but you don't have the same... Um, um, uh, you don't have some negative effects uh, that you do with a VRS solution, uh, which is a short baseline and not traceable back uh, to a real reference station, and you don't have those repeatability issues uh, that you sometimes experience with uh, with a VRS in the vertical. So how VRS work, or excuse me, how IMAX works, uh, is very similar to Mac uh, in that you have your series of stations. They're going to raw data stream all of their data back to our central uh, data facility. Uh, and once that happens, uh, we still compute a common ambiguity level. Again, when we talk about a common ambiguity level, uh, it means the common satellites. So if you don't have all common satellites that are GNSS, you can't fix ambiguities across all those satellites, uh, and then you can't offer a network correction uh, that that doesn't have, um, yeah, that has all those satellites that some of them would have. Uh, so if I'm up here in, in this station up in the uh, up in the upper left-hand corner uh, is GPS uh, and GLONASS only, and I get up here uh, in this uh, area up to the uh, up to the upper left, uh, then I'm going to fall into a GG uh, GPS and GLONASS solution as opposed to a uh, GNSS solution. Uh, my rover goes out to start to work. It sends its NEMA position uh, into the network, uh, and the network uh, computes an IMAX solution. Uh, the IMAX solution, again, is not just a single baseline off the station uh, in the lower left. Uh, it is actually a network-corrected uh, uh, baseline solution uh, accounting for all uh, of the atmospheric errors, ionosphere, tropospheric, satellite orbital error that you would experience uh, in the network. So again, we're, we're mitigating that PPM error uh, that you would experience. Uh, if you saw a MAC solution, uh, you'd have a master solution off the station down here, and then you'd have your auxiliaries, your, your, your correctors, your auxiliary correctors. This is just handled by the network. So the network uh, you know, interpolates the information and then sends you a network model solution uh, from that master station. Uh, if I move and I move up here uh, into the upper left, for example, and this is a GPS G, uh, GLONASS uh, station, uh, then when I get my IMAX solution, I would get a GG uh, network solution as opposed to a full GNSS uh, network solution. Uh, so you th in, that, in that case, you might see your Galileo and your Beidou satellites drop off of your solution. Again, it's nothing to be alarmed about. It just means that this master station uh, up here in the upper left is a GG only solution. Um, you can keep working just like you always have. It just means you're going to have less satellites uh, to work from. When we talk about networks, uh, we talk about network RTK methods. Uh, you know, these are the, the check boxes we want to see checked, uh, and the two uh, that are most important most of the time uh, are traceability, traceability and repeatability, and are they consistent? Uh, so IMAX offers the same uh, uh, strengths as MAC, uh, where yes, it is a traceable and repeatable solution. It means that I, when I look at my data, I'm getting a, a baseline from a real reference station that I can go back and look at. I can look at the metadata for that site. I can look at it 
data quality from that side. I can look at it all. It is consistent because I don't have a virtual station bouncing around on me. I'm always getting corrections from a real station so I can consistently get good horizontal and vertical answers. Uh, and in our case, the other really important thing, it is fully GNSS compatible, uh, meaning that I can go out, I can work, and I don't lose uh, all of those other satellites that I would gain uh, with IMAX uh, if I were using on a Mac solution. <clears throat> Any questions about moving to IMAX? Uh, this is one thing we'll talk about in, in just a second a little bit more, how you gain access to this. Uh, and We really are going to encourage folks to start moving this way, uh, even if you don't have a, a fully GNSS receiver, uh, just in case you do upgrade and it's kind of what you're used to using. Uh, but we'll be moving uh, and discussing moving everyone over uh, over a period of time to be able to really leverage uh, a full GNSS constellation uh, and the, you know 70 percent of the network that is uh, uh, that is G, uh, GNSS capable. Okay, so how do you gain access to GNSS corrections? Luckily, um, it's pretty easy. Uh, what do you need to use? Uh, first off, you need a GNSS capable rover. Um, you know, that means most current vintage rovers uh, are, uh, are, are going to be GNSS capable, uh, but you also need the GNSS activation codes for your rovers. Uh, so if you have a brand new whiz-bang receiver, uh, you don't have the activation codes, uh, then you'll need to contact your dealer to, to get those. Uh, and you also have to make sure your uh, uh, firmware uh, is GNSS capable. Uh, so over time, uh, firmware has changed, uh, and you need to make sure that you're on the most current version that optimize, uh, optimizes for these new signals and frequencies. Uh, for example, a Leica GS16 uh, user would need the multi-frequency option, uh, so that allows L1, L2, L5. Uh, you'd need the GLONASS option, you'd need the Galileo option, and you'd need the Beidou option to be able to track uh, all uh, of those uh, uh, four constellations and, and all the frequencies associ associated with them. Um, additionally, that user would need to upgrade to the newest version of firmware. Uh, I think it has been announced um, in the last couple days, uh, but you would need the uh, SmartWorks Viva firmware version 6.15. This is the GNSS receiver firmware, uh, aside from the controller software uh, that you'd have to make sure you upgrade, uh, update. Uh, we have a knowledge base article uh, that kind of outlines this and starting to put it together. Uh, so if we know what a receiver needs uh, to be able to get to GNSS, uh, we will post it on this knowledge base article and we will try to keep it updated uh, to the best of our ability. Uh, we are leaving this uh, knowledge base article open for comments, um, <laughs> which we'll have to moderate, I'm sure. Uh, but this will allow users to also say, hey, I'm using this version of uh, receiver, I'm using this version of firmware and I'm able to use uh, a GNSS solution. So we want some uh, crowdsource feedback on this uh, to make sure that we have the most current information uh, available to us, but we'll do everything we can uh, as, the, um, uh, as, the, as the knowledge source to keep this updated uh, and to make sure uh, that we have this uh, available to you guys uh, out in the field. Um, this will be a, a page as, as well as the um, uh, where we have GNSS coverage. Uh, you know, it will... Uh, it, no, it'll allow it. Uh, question is, if I'm not in the area that is currently worth getting those activation codes from the vendor just to have them on hand. That, that's really a, a call that you have to make, uh, Alicia. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, if you're only working Cape Cod and you don't go anywhere else except for that one little area, then maybe not. Uh, if you are working in a greater Massachusetts area, then yes, I would go ahead and get them because you're going to see benefit as soon as you uh, as soon as you leave uh, and, and get over that way. And, and again, um, you know, we have an upgrade program. Uh, so that doesn't mean today that, uh, uh, or even tomorrow, I'd have to look a little bit closer where your working area is, uh, that we wouldn't have GNSS coverage uh, available to you in the, in the near future. I don't think Cap Cod, uh, the station that's out there, is, is uh, uh, quite targeted for upgrade, but a station right next to it might be, so you might be close enough to get it. So you'll have to make that call yourself. Uh, Bill, I don't um, quite understand your question. If you could retop that, uh, I'd be happy to answer it. So, um, yeah, SmartNet will provide uh, full GNSS corrections in three formats. Uh, the first being uh, RTCM 3.2 MSM IMAX. Uh, so the mount point is MSM underscore IMAX, same uh, domain and, uh, and source table, uh, port 10,000. Uh, nearest, of course, mount point MSM underscore near. Uh, that's to get to the nearest station, uh, single baseline. Uh, and then we also, for uh, some of our uh, folks that um, uh, 
run different gear that do like VRS solutions, uh, you can use MSM underscore uh, the IRS uh, to get a full uh, GNSS solution. Uh, these are available today and will work with your existing logins. Uh, so if you have a GNSS capable receiver, uh, you have all the appropriate codes and you have a SmartNet login uh, and you're in an area of coverage, uh, then you can actually go on right this very second uh, and connect in uh, with a simple mount point change. Uh, all of your other connection details will remain the same. Um, is our GPS 1200 rover too old to be updated to take advantage of GNSS? Probably. Uh, you would need to talk to your uh, 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 your your rep uh, or your dealer uh, to find out uh, if your you know, if your 1200 to 1200 plus uh, you know it probably has the ability to do it uh, with purchasing a code uh, but if it's just a 1200 GG uh, then uh, yeah you'd probably be looking at uh, time to upgrade uh, and honestly with some of the performance things we've seen coming out it's something that you probably want to at least evaluate. Um, oopsie, back up one. There we go. So, uh, what mount points do we recommend? Uh, this goes back to a second, uh, a second ago. Uh, what mount points do we recommend? Um, for the MSM underscore IMAX, so the IMAX MSM message, uh, really anyone with a GNS capable rover, this would be our first recommendation, even over VRS. Um, uh, anyone currently using RTCM3 underscore IMAX, just as in general rule, go ahead and move over to this. Uh, once you get accustomed to using it, uh, you know, if you do have an upgraded receiver, you do buy codes later on, uh, or you know, if you're in an area right now that's not supported but will be supported soon, uh, you know, boom, it'll go live and you'll start seeing, them, seeing it immediately. Um, Anyone that's not sure about Mac optimization uh, on their rover, uh, some rovers have never really been fully optimized for Mac. Uh, you know, this would be what we would tell you to move to. Uh, anyone still using a nearest, solu nearest solution uh, in a network coverage area, please, 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 please move off of nearest and get to IMAX. And if you're changing, you might as well change to MSM IMAX. Uh, is there a real big difference between RTCM3 underscore IMAX and MSM IMAX? If you have a GG only receiver, uh, GPS Colonial receiver, you won't see a big difference. It's just if you do ever do go to GNSS, you will. Uh, but this is really, uh, we've taken over some networks lately uh, that have really been hung on nearest for some reason. I, I can't stress enough the performance impact going to a network solution will have for you guys using nearest. If nearest is the only thing available, if you're in a pocket uh, that only has a station, understand using nearest. But if you're in an area that has network coverage, then you got to get to a network solution. That's the whole purpose of what we do. Uh, so please move to it. Um, focusing on you guys up in New England area, a lot of you guys are still using nearest. Get over to IMAX. Uh, you'll be a lot happier for it. Um, and really any and all can move to using M, uh, MSM IMAX. Uh, this is a good move to make. Uh, you know, now's the time if you're, if you're thinking about it, go ahead and take that jump. Uh, and then that way, you know, as you upgrade codes, as coverage comes to your area, you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can just be ready for it. Uh, somebody for using Mac, uh, so if you're still uh, RTCM3, uh, RTCM3 Mac uh, top customer, um, that's not in a GNSS coverage area, you know, anyone uh, that has a Mac optimized rover can sit there, uh, but still IMAX and Macs uh, right now, uh, it's going to offer really similar performance um, uh, out in the field uh, and, uh, you know, you can take, you can kind of go either way. If you're using a GNSS rover and you're in a GNSS service area um, or you're using a GNSS rover and you've, that, that, you know, that's coming to a theater near you soon uh, to get GNSS, go ahead and move over to IMAX um, because you'll get uh, benefits immediately and not have to think about it later. Um, for nearest, uh, anyone using a currently a single baseline mount point, um, uh, that's who's going to use MSM nearest. Again, anybody using nearest right now should uh, should evaluate should they use it or not. Um, uh, if you're using RTCM3 underscore near, uh, go ahead and move over to MSM underscore near if you want to. Uh, near should be used in areas without networks uh, or in case of a network fixing issue. Um, so uh, if you see something that you're having a network fixing issue, uh, then you can always swatch over to nearest to, to get it. If you see a fixing issue, yeah, please drop us an email. Uh, say, hey, I'm having a problem with the solution in this particular area area uh, and let us look at or evaluate it uh, to see what's happening. Um, uh, if you're using Mac, uh, you might also move over to IMAX to see what kind of solution you get. 
it uh, as a difference. Um, uh, you know, so you know the there's a lot of different options. Uh, what do you mean by network phishing issue? Either uh, you're seeing issues with your fixed characteristics of your rover. Uh, so this means uh, you're out in the field and you're not seeing a good solution for some reason. You're connected in and you're looking and you're getting data. Uh, you can always go to nearest to see if you get a solution. Uh, there could be a station that's causing a problem. Uh, the, the network itself could be not fixed uh, or having problem fixing. Uh, and so instead of giving a bad solution, you're just you know, not able to fix appropriately. Uh, but if you see this in the field, let us know. Uh, you know this is so you know, we can look at uh, look at it on our side of your particular area, your particular time, uh, and of course, the faster you can do that, uh, the more likely we are to see uh, the issue. Uh, the the good thing about fixing issues in a network uh, is they're usually uh, passing, um, you know, so they they kind of come and go uh, if there's something happening. Uh, so they they typically don't happen over a long period of time. Uh, the bad thing is is they kind of come and go. Uh, so if you you know, touch back base by this a week later and say, hi, I had fixing issues at this point this time last week. It's really hard to track down. So the faster you can tell us that you may be seeing an issue out in the field, uh, the faster we could look at it. Again, I'm gonna belabor this. If you're in a network coverage area, please move to network corrections, be it Mac or IMAX, uh, please move to a network correction. Uh, this will make a huge difference um, in your normal day-to-day -day operations, and you can always use Nearest as a fallback if you need to. So for folks using not using RTCM 3.1 or higher, we know that you're out there. Uh, they're still on RTCM 2.3 that are on CMR or CMR Plus. Just so you know, you are only getting GPS corrections. There are no GLONASS. Forget about anything else, uh, any of the other corrections. Uh, you're only getting GPS only. You're not even in GLONASS. Um, and there's no possibility to use anything other than GPS. The network formats themselves don't carry components to allow for fixing on other GNSS solutions uh, with RTCM 2.3, CMR, or CMR+. Uh, if you're using these and your equipment supports it, please move to a more modern correction format and type. Uh, this is really important. We see folks that are using CMR+. Plus. Um, that means that you're only getting the GPS solution. Uh, it means you can't use GLONASS, we can't, blow, we can't send out the type of receiver uh, that you're getting it from, so your rover can't model the GLONASS biases uh, in the receiver. Uh, this means that you can't use it uh, for GLONASS, so please don't do that. Um, switch over to RTCM uh, 3.1 or 3.2 uh, with the appropriate mount point if your receiver is capable of doing it. If you've got an old um, you know, receiver, uh, the CMR Plus only, it, probably it's time to look at uh, a new piece of GNSR hardware because uh, anything of uh, not even recent vintage but uh, uh, of uh, the last 10 years uh, can really support RTCM 3.1. So uh, please take a look at it. Um, uh, what if a rover is near one base station and other network station much further away? Does it distort data? And if uh, far away station has weather different? Uh, no, that has zero, uh, zero impact. Uh, if you're close enough to a reference station that a network solution could uh, um, uh, negatively affect the solution, uh, then the network will automatically follow you back to a single baseline anyway. Uh, so for example, uh, if I'm inside of three kilometers from a reference station uh, and the network, uh, the network could, unbi could bias the solution negatively, uh, this network automatically inside 3K gives you a single baseline solution to that nearest station. Once I get outside the three kilometers, it starts looking at a network solution. Weather plays zero part uh, uh, in um, uh, in the solution. Uh, you know, realistic speaking, uh, you could have you know high moisture content in the troposphere uh, that could negatively impact a solution. But that's the whole point of network solutions in general uh, is to be able to model and mitigate that to the best of our abilities. Um, so you know the state, the network is absolutely designed to take care of those type of things. So it's not something that you have to worry about. Uh, there was a question earlier uh, about an R8 um, Model 2 capable for GNSS. Uh, Kenneth, I don't know. Um, uh, I will put that on my list of things to research for you. Uh, and then on the knowledge base article at uh, that's at gnss.snna.co, uh, we will make an update uh, to, um, to look at that R8 Series 2 question mark GNSS. I have put it down. All right, uh, FC5000 receiver with a Topcon Hyper uh, receiver. So FC5000 is a data collector. Uh, Hyper-V is the receiver. Um, did it, did it, did it, did it. 
I don't know on GNSS, but I will put that down. Topcon hyper B. Okay, I will find out. Uh, and again, uh, even if your R8 or your Hyper-V uh, are GNSS capable, um, you will need to make sure that you have the appropriate licensing codes uh, to turn that on uh, if they are GNSS capable. But I'll find out and let you know. Uh, okay, so the question is, if I'm able to currently use RTCM IMAX or RTCM NIR, do you think I can move to GNSS? Uh, no, I don't. That, uh, that that pays no bearing right now into whether you can move to GNSS. It would depend on your receiver type. Uh, it would depend on your activation codes. Uh, but there would be no harm whatsoever uh, moving to MSM underscore IMAX uh, as your solution. If you can use GNSS, you'll automatically get it. If you can't, then you can start talking to a uh, uh, dealer or support uh, to find out what type of uh, receiver you have uh, and uh, uh, what, uh, what it's capable of doing. Uh, so, I, like I said, if you're capable, uh, if you're using, um, back up a couple slides here, if I can find my mouse cursor. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, if you're capable of using uh, you know, a correction, I would go ahead and move to MSM underscore IMAX. Uh, this means that you will find out if you're capable of using it or not. Uh, you won't have to cause a lot of problems, and it's just a mount point change, uh, so it's not a big, humongous, gigantic change uh, to uh, to make that change. Da -da -da -da. Um. Kelly, uh, we'll take that on the back end just in a second. And currently using RTCM, do I need to go to the supplier to get an update? No, you can change this yourself. Uh, you can use the connection and co uh, configuration guides to help you do that, or you can call your local dealer, uh, depending on what type of receiver you can do. Uh, if you're using RTCM 3 right now, RTCM 3.2 MSM is readable. Okay, so uh, think of it this way. Um, if you get a letter from somebody uh, and it's typed out all in English, you can read all the English stuff, uh, and you're, you know, you don't read German, uh, but you have a buddy that's your roommate that's German, and the, that part of the letter is meant for uh, for your guy, that, your buddy that speaks German, uh, and you can't read it. Um, you can completely disregard it because it's for somebody else, uh, so you don't need it. Same thing with the RTCM. There's individual containers inside of the inside of RTCM that have different message types. So if your rover can read GPS and GLONASS it will read the parts of the message that are GPS and GLONASS. If it can't read the parts that are, um, you know, Galileo, Beidou, it just ignores them. It doesn't pay any bit of attention to them. Uh, it just uh, disregards them and throws them out the door. Uh, so there is absolutely no harm uh, for somebody currently using RTCM 3.1 uh, to go to RTCM 3.2. It will just ignore uh, the other messages. So no big deal. Uh, Trimble R10 supports all GNSS satellites uh, in CMRX format. Um, and all GNSS signals, GPS, GLONASS, uh, R8 cannot, GPS, GLONASS only. Uh, that's, n okay, uh, I'm not sure that's completely accurate, but I think so. Uh, CMRX is not supported. Uh, CMRX is a proprietary standard. Uh, we believe in open standards such as RTCM. Uh, so RTCM 3.2 MSM uh, is supported by Trimble. Um, yeah, so if you have an R10, you can use it. Uh, and some of the newer R8s also do have uh, the ability to do Galileo and Beidou. Um, probably not L5, uh, but they are capable of tracking and utilizing uh, depending on what version of R8 you have. So, uh, Bandwidths, you know, the question is, is moving because you're using more bandwidth. Uh, it's not that much more bandwidth, Aaron. And guess what? If you're a SmartNet subscriber, uh, later this year you get the bandwidth for free. So it really doesn't matter to you. Uh, it matters to us, but it won't, it won't, hurt, you. It won't hurt you one bit. Um, the packet sizes are really small. All right, so I'm, I'm going to say this one more time. If you're in a network coverage area, please move to network corrections. Please, 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 please. Uh, it'll get you better accuracies. And, hey, I get another chance on this, too. If you're using something older, you know, move to 3.2 uh, if you can. Uh, it'll allow you uh, a, lot better, uh, a lot better support of the current satellite signals, uh, GPS and GLONASS, and also what we're launching today uh, with uh, Beidou and, and Galileo if, you're, if your rover supports it. So support resources, uh, as always, uh, this is uh, this is us. We're here. Uh, we are here for you. Um, use the portal. 
Uh, if you haven't checked it out and you go to support.smartnetna.com, uh, it will take you to a nice little thing and it has a lot of great information on it. Uh, and we encourage you to go here to get questions answered. Uh, you can always search. So if you were to go there and type in GNSS, uh, then all of our GNSS articles uh, are here to type in uh, future uh, or a lot of different things. Um, the, the articles that we're, that we're putting together uh, for the GNSS upgrades and, and rollout um, will, be, uh, we will be available for you there. Uh, and if you can't find what you need, email us, uh, support at smartnetna.com. Uh, you know, email us here and we're going to get back to you. Uh, question is how fast? Uh, we try to get back to you just as fast as possible. Uh, so this is a metric over the last 30 days. Uh, our average first reply uh, is 1.57 hours uh, with 76% of them uh, handled uh, within the first hour. Uh, just so you know, if you get a more delayed response, uh, something in the 14 or 10% range out there, uh, that you typically means the question is, I can't work, I am down in the field. Uh, if you send a I can't work, I'm down in the field question, 76% uh, of you guys get answers back just as fast as our little fingers can type. Um, uh, South Texas would be the valley. South Texas is available right now. Uh, San Antonio, uh, we've got some firmware upgrades to do, so it's not available just yet. Uh, but uh, uh, you could go out and you could work and you would probably get GNSS in some areas, uh, but in other areas you'd see your uh, your uh, Galileo and, and Beidou start dropping out, so we're not saying it's 100% yet. All right, so wrapping up. Um, we always like to wrap up uh, with this uh, at the end um, because uh, we feel it's really important for you guys to understand uh, why we do what we do uh, and what decisions we make and what kind of drives it. Uh, so our commitment is, is pretty simple. Uh, we're committed to providing high precision, uh, high availability network RTK corrections. Uh, we're, provided, uh, we're committed to providing this in a network industry standard, RTCM. Uh, we're provided to doing it for all precision industries, survey, engineering, monitoring, GIS, agriculture, construction, UAVs, you name it, we do it. Uh, provide this in a stable and reliable infrastructure on a standard reference frame. Uh, provide a complete customer experience uh, from support and services uh, to online tools. Uh, so we want to do this for everybody, and this is how we make a decision on anything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so we, you know, this is what we commit to you guys, and hopefully we're living up to our commitment, because if we're not, let us know, and we'll do everything we can uh, to try. So with that, we've got about eight minutes to answer some questions. Hopefully we answered most of them as we go. Um, uh, so we got another question here. Uh, my broadcast format lists multi-station RTCM3, uh, or I have a station for RTCM3 net. Which one would I have a better choice? Um, on a Trimble, probably multi-station uh, RTCM uh, would be the best choice, uh, or just straight up RTCM. I know that there's a, a choice for straight up RTCM. Uh, RTCM 3 net is a, a max solution, uh, so that would uh, you would expect to hear uh, the master station corrections, uh, and inside that RTCM message, you would also expect to hear the auxiliary corrections in their different little message containers that come through. Um, uh, and if you don't, it just doesn't work. Uh, so I would try multi-station RTCM 3, uh, but depending on the version of software, and controller you have. Uh, we do have a quick guide um, uh, up on the website uh, that uh, you can look at uh, that actually tells you exactly the choice uh, to use. I just can't remember uh, off the top of my head. So I had another question a second ago. Let me scroll up here. Um, RTK precision versus static. Trying to determine if we're good to use RTK over static for control um, using our total station. Uh, yes, you can use RTK over static. It's just a matter of how you do it. Uh, typically, what you would recommend, what we'd recommend it to do, uh, is kind of depending on the type of control that you're trying to set. Um, uh, are you setting temporary control, uh, meaning that uh, I need to drop a pair of points to turn into a difficult environment uh, to take a shot uh, with my total station, or am I setting permanent control for that project that I'm going to come off of time and time and time again. Uh, so it kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, they both start the same way, uh, which is one occupation. Uh, and that occupation is typically going to be, uh, say, 180, 180 epic uh, or, say, a three-minute occupation of averages uh, that just averages over that three minutes time span. Uh, if you're just dropping a pair of points, then you would take your first shot for your, your Occupy point, uh, go uh, for three minutes, and then walk down to your, your backside point, you know, take a three-minute observation, uh, and then set up with your total station, backside, and turn in and shoot. Uh, 
Um, if you're talking about permanent control, then you would take your first observation for three minutes, you walk down downrange to your other control point, you take your other three minute observation, and then you would wait four hours, and you would come back and do that again. Uh, the real key here is to uh, see a statistically different constellation. Uh, in the past, uh, when you're blue booking points, for example, with GPS, uh, this would mean an afternoon observation, a morning observation, and then a, you know, you know, offset afternoon observation or morning afternoon morning, just depending on you know how you were doing it and how you got out there. Um, you can do the same type of thing uh, with RTK now, uh, especially network RTK, uh, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're also modeling ionospheric air, tropospheric air, and satellite orbital air. Uh, so to see a statistically different constellation and to not have those effects uh, impact us quite as much, a four-hour uh, four gap between those two observation uh, intervals uh, is plenty of time uh, to be able to get measurable uh, accuracies that you can say, okay, I can trust this uh, as an RTK shot. Um, now, the one key element here is, you know, don't take a three-minute observation and topo, 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 and then another, you know, another three-minute observation on your backstop point. You could see a difference uh, that you could measure, uh, especially for uh, uh, for that temporary control. We were trying to drop two two in a line. Uh, do occupy and then move down range, occupy and then topo on your way back or something like that. Um, but as long as you do three minutes, um, you know, uh, three minutes on one, three minutes on the other, and then come back four hours later, uh, then yeah, you should be able to do that versus doing uh, doing static uh, and get some more results. Um, do, 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 all right, questions coming fast and furious. Uh, what was the website address for the knowledge base article? How about we just go back that way? Let's go here. Did it, did it, did it. Here we go. Um, so here is the knowledge base article uh, for your rover compatibility. Uh, we've just started working on this um, of the things that we do know. Uh, if you see something, you can post a comment or you can email us. We'll add it. Uh, so HTTP uh, GNSS dot SNNA dot co. Pretty simple. Uh, you know, we're talking about GNSS and SNNA dot co is our short sign. So there you go. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Bill, I would uh, your GNSS, your GPS 1200 rover. Uh, give your uh, rep a call. Uh, he'll be able to answer you better than uh, uh, better than I would. Uh, let's see here. I have a device uh, networking trip. SmartNet Texas VRS is okay, or do I need to update? Uh, um, in the San Antonio, it depends on what you want to do, Gary. Uh, if you are have a GNSS capable uh, Centurion, I don't know anything about that receiver, but I'll take a peek at it. Um, uh, Centurion PSX8. Uh, I'll take a peek at that, and if I see anything of note, I will post something on the gnss.sna.co uh, knowledge base article for you. Uh, so just hold out. Uh, you can switch to MSM underscore VRS without any problem, and it will not negatively affect you. If you're using RTCM3 VRS, then go ahead and switch to MSM uh, VRS. You should be good to go. Uh, if you have a GG03, is there a way you know if upgrade to MSM IMAX, um, half L1, L2, and it is in GNSS? Uh, Give Brett a call or uh, MTS a call on that, Alicia. They'll be able to answer that question. I'm not sure on 03. The new 04 is capable of it with upgrades. Uh, da -da, da -da 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 -da. Um, James, do you have an ex inexpensive account for people who want to test the rover setup on a drone? Um, drop an email on the support, James, and uh, we will uh, take a uh, we'll, we'll talk to you offline about that. And James, just so you know, support at smartnetna.com. If you'll drop an email into there, uh, one of us go back with you. Who would I contact on the developer side to make sure I make our product compatible with SmartNet? Uh, John, drop us email into support. Uh, so support at smartnetna.com, uh, and we will uh, take the, the take that up with you offline. And again, that. Uh, Email address uh, for both John and uh, James is right here. No, 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 no. Here, where is that? There it is. So there's our email support at smartnetna.com. Uh, if you drop an email there, uh, we will get back to you to answer those questions. Uh, and the question that has come up a couple times is where do I have GNSS coverage? Um, currently, today, right now, out the box. Uh, available immediately, and that is this right here. Uh, so available immediately, uh, you can go out in Connecticut, uh, Delaware, uh, what, uh, Eastern Maryland, uh, Georgia, uh, the Lower Mainland BC, uh, Metro Boston, uh, Metro Chicago, 
Metro Dallas, Fort Worth, Metro Denver, Metro Houston, Oregon, PEI, Rhode Island, Southern California, South Texas, the Valley, Washington, Wisconsin, and West Texas. Uh, so right now you can walk out today. Uh, so that question earlier about South Texas, uh, I think Gary, uh, you are asking about San Antonio. Uh, South Texas we consider to be uh, uh, the Valley. I actually have it in there twice. Uh, sorry about that. Um, uh, but that's that. And then for you guys that aren't in those coverage areas, uh, here's where our footprint will be uh, here in the next two to four weeks uh, when we get everything upgraded. Uh, for folks that see these uh, kind of bulbous zero, you know, these 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 round circle-y kind of things, uh, those will be GNSS single baseline coverages. Um, I didn't put this in the slides, but if you have a choice between a GG network correction and a GNSS single baseline, Make sure you choose the GG network correction. Uh, it's going to be better um, because you are more modeling part per million error uh, more so than you are where you won't be uh, with a GNSS only single baseline. If you want to play with the GNSS single baseline, I play with it. But if you're really watching your accuracies, um, you know, say for in this area, uh, you would be able to get GNSS uh, receipt. Uh, corrections in this area here in the coming weeks, uh, but uh, uh, they would be um, uh, they would be GPS. Uh, um, uh, they would be single baseline only. They would not be uh, GNSS. So um, with that, folks, uh, we are right at 2 o'clock. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a lot about this. Uh, I did record it. I started about a minute late, so my first little intro spiel was missed. I do apologize. It'll look kind of funny. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll be posting that later today um, uh, up on the website uh, for everybody that didn't attend um, or for folks in your organization that you might want to uh, you know, show it to. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as always, we're excited about this. Uh, tests yesterday were awesome. Uh, we still got some work to do, um, some sleep, sleepless nights ahead to make sure that everything's where it needs to be. Uh, but go out, try it. Um, uh, and uh, you should be good to go. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to sign off now unless we have some more questions. Uh, I'll wait for a few more minutes to answer any questions, but you guys are free to go. Your homework is to test it out, see what you think. And if you need help, let us know. All right. Not seeing any questions roll in. Uh, Bill, just uh, you drop an email to support, and we will uh, take this up offline with you. Um, Alicia, you can email us, uh, or uh, you can uh, uh, give uh, uh, MTS or like a GIS a call on your L, uh, your GGO3. I don't know off the top of my head, um, so I would actually be probably emailing somebody else to find out. Um, but uh, you can also refer back to uh, the uh, um, the knowledge base article that will be uh, updated shortly because uh, I will find out about that and I will make sure uh, that it get post gets posted um, uh, at the uh, uh, at the appropriate. Uh, place. Uh, so at least you can refer to the knowledge base article um, probably tomorrow and I'll have an answer for you up there uh, or you can email us or probably contact MTS and they should be able to tell you. Uh, Bill, um, uh, GR8, if you can email me exactly what you have. Uh, if you have a Trimble R8, uh, then um, like I said, I'm going to check on the R8 Series 2 uh, and post it up on the Knowledge Base article. Uh, the current, I'll uh, we'll just go here into the Knowledge Base article for a second. Oh, darn it, didn't work. Uh, da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Open, drag this over. Oh, come on. Sorry. And we get a DNS error, of course. My machine's not acting right. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, uh, Bill, if you'll check back. Uh, um, oh, you meant great. <laughs> I'm not hip to the, I'm not hip to the, to the lingo, Bill. Apologize for that. <laughs> and Alicia will, uh, will check on that GG03 for you. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Have a great day. Uh, have a great week. And uh, go out and check out the uh, new capabilities of SmartNet. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.